Psalm chapter 119, we're going to start reading in verse number 10. The Bible says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth, and I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and I have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes, and I will not forget thy word. <clears throat> Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you again for everything you've given to us and everything you've blessed us with, Lord. Lord, I don't want to come here tonight without giving you thanks for those that have fought for our freedoms, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come here tonight. Lord, just the freedom to just come and worship, the freedom just to gather at your house. Lord, we never want to take that lightly or take that for granted. Lord, I ask you just help what you've laid upon my heart. Help me, Lord, give it to your people here the same way you gave it to me, Lord. It can be help to blessing each and every one here, Lord, and just speak to hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at uh, by way of introduction is verse 11. Look at the hiding that he's talking about in verse 11. He says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Now just start with a simple question. What do you hide in your heart tonight? What, is, what do we hide... Uh, in our heart. You know, you hear so many times, and I believe it was even referenced uh, this weekend at some point. I don't remember if we talked about it over at the jail. I think it might even have been Brother Phil over at the jail and talking about, you know, if, if you grew up going to church at all, even as a kid, and those songs that you hear, or certain verses that you hear, that you can even, uh, no matter how old you get, always remember those things. Why? Because we hide those things in our heart. And, and th those are wonderful things to hide, but I'm afraid too many times we, we hide worthless things in there. Um, we get to pondering about things that do us no good. Uh, you know, I, I'm a huge sports fan. If you read the devotion, I'm a big golf fan. And, and it amazes me the people that I will talk to at work, and they can tell you different stats and all kinds of stuff. I have one guy I work with, and, and we, you could name a movie, and he could tell you 50, the top 15 actors or something in that movie. And it's like, I have no idea. You tell me that, I have no idea who the people are or anything like that. Why? It just To me, it's not that important. You know, But God's Word should be important. These are the things that we should be hiding in our heart. His Word should be hid in our heart. His Word should be hidden there so that when somebody comes up to us that's struggling in the day or just needing something, we have a verse to give them. We have something from the Bible that we can give them. So we see the hiding in verse number 11. I want us to look at the happy, so to speak, in verses 12 and 14. He says, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. He's blessed. He's happy. In verse 14, I have rejoiced in the way of the testimonies as much as in all riches. Uh, we talk about celebrating Christmas. Everybody just seems so happy as long as you stay off Mall Road. Uh, and I was talking to Tina the other day, uh, I believe it was yesterday, and she was out driving the first time she's been out, and this was early in the morning still. And, and the next thing, I, all I hear her say in the phone, she's like, just calm down, it just turned green. And I was like, somebody blow the horn at you? She goes, yeah. She goes, they had to be sitting there with their hand on the horn. You know, but here he is, he's happy. We should delight in God's Word. We should be happy because we have the opportunity to come here. I never want to fail to give thanks to God for those that, that fought and gave our freedoms that we have that opportunity to come here tonight. It should make us happy. It should get us excited. No matter how much traffic we dealt with today, no matter how bad a day we had on the job, it should make us happy to get to be able to come and worship God tonight. But see the honor in verse number 15. It says, I will meditate in thy precepts. I have respect unto thy ways. Do we have an honor or respect for God the same way that we do for other things? Well, honor soldiers, honor those people in the military, honor those people that deserve that honor. Yeah. What about the same way with God? Yeah. Do, we do, do we treat the God the same way? Do we treat the God with that same type of honor that we do others? Amen. Or we just give him a second thought? And we'll get, to, we'll get to that here in just a little bit later. But we see uh, what he's heard in verse number 16. I would delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Why would he not forget it? Because he heard it. Not that he listened to it. He heard it. He heard it. What does the Bible say? There would not be a famine for the preaching of the word of God, but for a hearing of the word of God. See, when we hear those things, we apply them. We hide them. We put them in our life. We, we practice them in our day-to-day -day life. It becomes all about him. And that's all I want to preach on with God's help tonight. Found in verse number 10. I've played this back in my mind how to go about telling you uh, where this all came from, and, and, and I'll just do it right now. If you remember a couple months ago, our pastor mentioned talking about praying about a building. 
that you know we're at capacity, don't have space for room and those types of things, and and you got Amazon adding all these jobs and those people. We need those people in church, and and maybe it just comes from me going to jail. Uh, you know, I go to jail, so I see a lot of times through the spring and the summer, and you 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 leave out of jail and you see those thousands of people over there antique shopping. Um, when we used to have uh, meals in the back and we would get chicken, I would stop and get the chicken. And you, you walk into Kroger at 1030 on a Sunday morning, it's packed. Now, maybe some of those people are saved. I'm not here to judge them. I, I'd be willing to bet most of them aren't. Or they'd be in church, Brother Ray. Right. And so we see a lot of people around that just, they need to be in church. They need God. They need those things. And he talked about praying. And, and when he talks about those things, I get excited. You know, I, I, I'll get to talking at home, and, and Tina will tell me, you just need to calm down. Just, just relax a little bit. I get excited. And I wanted to call him. I'm going to say, Pastor, it, will it be okay with you if I just start doing a little study on what it would take to turn this into a, a, re, to a mission, a rescue mission? Well, can I just, just, just what it takes? We don't want to get to that point where we're ready to move out and do something, and then got to figure something out. And God, God began to deal with me. Is your whole heart in everything that you're doing now? Oh, absolutely it is. Absolutely. I mean, I'm praying and studying, do, do what you want me to do, and try to convince myself I'm putting my whole heart into everything. Amen. And I kept telling myself, and, and, and God gave me this message, and you can even look at the dates on the notes. It's a little over a month ago, and, and God had me uh, start writing some stuff down. And then last week, our pastor preached, set on the great pot. And what did Brother Ricky, that missionary, talk about? Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And then God began to illuminate all this to me. So you say you're doing with your whole heart. What about just a little bit more? You know, I am blessed that I have a job that really does not take a whole lot of, uh, of brain functionality to do. So I can spend, I'll be honest with you, I, I, just, I don't. But it gives me the opportunity to spend a lot of time just thinking about things throughout the day. Thinking about what I'm going to preach on the weekend. Thinking about the devotions. Thinking on the things of God. And he began to, could you not think five more minutes? I'm not asking you to spend a whole other day, not asking you to do this, just a little bit more. Just do things with your whole heart. See, we think we do. We try to convince ourselves that we do. But do we truly? When you really get down to it, do we truly? I've, gotten, I've watched more Hallmark movies this year than I ever have. But what about if we just, just five more minutes? Just five more minutes with him. Instead of watching the whole ball game, what if we just watch the second half? Instead of watching the whole golf tournament, what if you just watched the back nine? There are certain things we could do just a little bit more to truly have our whole heart invested. And then what could he do? Look, I'm not, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Farthest thing from it. But you put just a little bit more, and all of a sudden you see seven people get saved on a weekend. You can have a person come up at work camp over the same people that you seem to have and just a couple new guys come and somebody come up at the end of service and say, I need to get saved. Yeah. You can go through a men's service and preach and just have one after another come up and say, I need to get saved. I need to get saved. Yeah. Just a little bit more. With our whole heart. Sure. With our whole heart, number one, do we seek his precepts. Good. This is mentioned over, that word precepts mentioned over a dozen times just in Psalm 119. I understand it's a long chapter, but it's mentioned over a dozen times just in this, including back in verse number 4. He says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts, precepts diligently. And he tells us in, in, over in Isaiah, I believe it is, uh, uh, precept upon precept. Yeah. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Why is that important? Well, it seems like to me a lot of times that, that we are so quick and easy to point the finger at others. Yeah. Why can't they be in church? Why can't they do this? Amen. The Bible tells us we're supposed to be in church when, we, when the doors are open. The Bible also tells us not to hold a grudge. Right. Why can't they do this and all the times that we've not opened up our Bible all week? Good. See, it's easy to point the finger at others and claim certain things while we're harboring our own things. Right. And when we're harboring our own things that God tells us that we're supposed to be doing and we're not doing those things, how can we be talking about others? See, I often wonder, the Bible tells us to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him in a sin. Uh, sure. And it amazes me how we're so quick to decide that we are judge and jury on what people do and what we classify as sin. No, it does. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him in his sin. So if it's something that we're doing that's not good, it's sinful. True. Regardless, if the Bible tells us to do something or not to do something, we're doing the opposite. It's sinful, plain and simple. 
But too many times, we're not seeking his precepts with our whole heart because we want to pick and choose what we do. The second thing, seek his promises. You ever had a bad day? Anybody? Especially this time of year, right? 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 20 says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. And all of his promises are yes. He, is gonna, he will fulfill all his promises. When you're having a bad day, I always love Brother Bobby Cato, the one of the first times I think I can ever remember him coming here preaching. He talked about that verse, I will ever need... Uh, slow down. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. It means the same thing, forwards and backwards. Thee forsake, thee leave, neither will I. Amen. See, if you think you're having a bad day, just, just rest on that promise that he's still there for you. Right. Just rest on that promise that, you know what, no matter how bad it is, no matter how many people ignore me, no matter what somebody does to me today, I know God's right here by my side. You can't get me down. You can try all you want, but I know God is here. We don't have to worry about those things because God can't lie. He's going to fulfill his promises. We can look at John. If, if you think of uh, how bad things might be to come, just keep in fact in mind what it, he tells us. Brother Doug tells us at the end of uh, every message, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Why? Because the Bible tells us those things. Seek his promises. We should be so enveloped in, in his word and in his promises for us that we just almost refuse to have a bad day. Right. Yeah, life can get us down. I, I get that. Yeah. But it shouldn't keep us down because we have the promises of God. When we hide those things in our heart that he talks about in verse number 11, we can seek his promises and know that, you know, no matter how bad things might be, I have the promise of God that he's always there with me. Amen. He's always going to be there for me and nothing else can come against me. Right. The third thing we need to seek with our whole heart and seek his purpose. In Jeremiah chapter number 1 and verse number 5, we know he tells Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I, and before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Have you ever asked him, like uh, uh, Paul did in that road to Damascus, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And you meant it? Not window dressing. Not having somebody preach and thinking, uh, uh, preach, you sit on the great pot and do just a little more. Not, not when to dressing just to make yourself feel good for the night, but ask God, what is it you want me to do and truly mean it? Whatever God tells me to do, I'm going to do that. If he tells me to preach, if he tells me to ask the pastor to help teach, if he tells me to go take the trash cans down, if he tells me to clean the bathrooms, whatever it is that God tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Because you know what? If we are willing to ask... He will tell us. In Acts chapter number 8, in verse 26 and 29, this is what I preached out at the jail over the weekend. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south of the way, goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to his chariot. Talking about the Ethiopian eunuch. He told him, Here's what you need to do. You don't think God will tell you somebody to talk to or something to do? He's got right here. He told Philip exactly what to do. We could go back where I talked about Paul, and he asked Paul, Lord, what would that have me to do? And he told him, here's what you're going to do. Here's where you're going to go. Here's who you're going to find. Here's what you're going to do. And then he even went before him and said, here, I'm sending this fellow down, and this is what's going to happen. But too many times we do it as window dressing. God, what do you want me to do? Not really meaning it. Leaving it on the altar. Well, God told me to do this, but I just, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. God told me to testify tonight, but I just... I testify every night. A pastor talked about it on Sunday. God told me to go to the altar, but I go to the altar every week. What does difference does it make? If he told you to do it, do it. God told me that I need to do this, but I, I just don't know. I, 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 I'll be honest. The devotion on uh, 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 Monday, I, I, God, why do you... Nobody cares about this golf tournament, Brother Jordan, outside of me and Caitlin. That was it. Nobody cared. But I couldn't get that thought off my mind. I just wrote a devotion last week talking about having full confidence in God. Why do you want me to talk about trusting in God again? That's all I could get off my mind. So I wrote it. Do you know, Brother Donald, at 5 o'clock in the morning, I got a text message from somebody how much they enjoyed it. I don't know why. Now I'm not going to call the person out who texted me. I appreciate it. It helped me a lot. Just that text message helped me tremendously to know that somebody got something out of it. See, we have no idea. If we're just willing to seek him with our whole heart, God, what is it you want me to do? This isn't, I, I, I tell them at the jail all the time, this isn't a Joel Olstein trying to make you feel better about yourself. But I firmly believe God has a purpose for each and every one of us. 
If he did not, we wouldn't be here. I believe God controls the very breath that we breathe, and if God didn't have something we could do, we wouldn't be here. I don't care how bad off you may feel like you are physically, mentally, or whatever it may be, God has something that each and every one of us can do. It might be just pray. It might be getting birthday, sending out birthday cards. I look forward every year to getting that birthday card from Sister May. I might be the only one that does. That's fine. I do. That's a blessing. God has something he wants us to do. Do we seek it with our whole heart? God, what does he want me to do? Or we just, God, if you'll show me something, I'll do it for a day or two. I'll do it for a week or two, or whatever it may be. Or we seek it wholeheartedly. God's purpose for our life. The fourth thing, we need to seek his pardon. Micah chapter 7 and verse 18 says, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Think about that. Now I understand we're talking about the Wednesday night crowds. I understand we might not be talking about our pardon for sins, but how many times do we allow the devil to beat us up over our past? I'm not telling us to glory in our past. I'm not telling us that we should go out and say, this is everything I used to do and those kind of things. But you know what? God's forgiven us of it. We need to get past it. I used to say all the time, don't let your past hinder your future. Because too many times we think so much about that past. We allow the devil to get in our mind and beat us up. I told you, he will do it. It was a wonderful blessing. I text Brother Phil in Charleston, South Carolina. Brother Phil, how'd it go? Brother Phil texts him back. I think one man saved and four ladies saved. Texting back. That's wonderful. That's a blessing. And then as I'm driving down the road, Brother Ray, I get thinking, it's amazing God saved those people when I was gone. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be there. Maybe it's the things that because what I've done in the past, maybe that's keeping God from moving. Maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I should just couldn't go. Let Brother Phil take all care of all of it. See, God, will, the devil will get in your head and he'll get that and he'll start bringing up the past, all these things you do. That's when we need to seek and say, no, God's forgiven me of those things. I ask God to forgive me. I can take you to the very place in my bedroom floor I remember November 7th and asking God to save me and forgive me of those things. And then it tells us he delighteth in mercy of the fact of letting us have those things. Wholeheartedly, we need to seek his pardon. Because when we don't do it wholeheartedly, we allow the devil to get in and beat us up. Let me say this lastly, and I'll be done. Seeking God with our whole heart, not just for wind addressing, but wholeheartedly asking, seeking God, what is it that we can do? You have to seek Him personally. I can't seek Him for you, Brother Phil. I can't ask God what you are supposed to do. Our pastor has shared this before, and I can, ha- I can say the same thing. I remember growing up, going to church, having people come tell me, you'll be a preacher when you grow up. Well, they might have been right, but that don't mean that they knew. I can tell you, I've had people at this church tell me, you do such a wonderful job, I, I, you will be a pastor one day. And as our pastor used to say, when he would tell people, well, I'm glad God told you before he told me. We have to seek him personally. See, it becomes the ball about that personal relationship with Christ. Amen. And too many times, we want to ride the coattails of others, so to speak, or we want to watch everybody else do something instead of seeking God personally of what we can do wholeheartedly. It is amazing the times that we can set back and we can watch other people do certain things and then we'll complain about how those things get done. Maybe if you ask God what you could have done, he might have had you do that. And then you wouldn't have to complain. Then we complain about you doing it. But see, it's about asking God personally. Not God, show Brother Doug, show our pastor what we need to do for the building. God, what part do you want me to play in that? God, what is it I need to do? God, do I, do I need to, and, and I, look, I, I understand our past talks about we have a very giving church. God, do I need to give an extra $5 to make sure we can pay the, the rent on the new building and pay the electric on a new building? God, do I need to volunteer because if it's going to be bigger, we might need somebody else to clean? Do I need to no, say, God, Pastor, I can help clean, I can do whatever. What part is it that you can play? 
Because we have to seek him personally. I talked about at the very beginning how God began to deal with me about this. And asking God, God, what does he want me to do? I'm doing all I can. Make an excuse for myself. We invite people. I invite people all the time to Hope Ministry. I want to start it back up. Nobody wants to come. Invite people all the time. We still tell them every week at jail. It's still in the bulletin. We take to jail. Tell them all the time. Invite them to come. Trying to get them to come. God, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. Invite them to come. Are you doing everything? Do you pray enough for it? Yeah, you're inviting them to come, but how much are you praying throughout the week that they come? How much are you praying throughout the week about doing those things? And then I began to make excuse. Well, I don't, you know, I could come out here on Friday nights, but I hate to ask everybody else to give up an hour and a half because I know how our church is. I know how much everybody would be willing if I said we're going to start it back up that are willing to get ready and put forth the time to get ready and come out here and set to have nobody show up and go back home. Maybe that's what it's going to take. Maybe that's what it's going to take to show that we're serious. I don't know. But see, it becomes what is it that we need to do personally? Not about what the pastor can do. Not about what somebody else can do. Not about, God, give, give them guidance on revival. God, maybe if you'll start revival in my heart, maybe everybody else will see that. Man, can you, do you see what the Lord has done for Brother James? And maybe that would get us all excited, and then maybe we would see revival. Sure. Seeking him wholeheartedly. Because I'm afraid that too many times we just do it halfway. We're just willing to go about halfway instead of being wholeheartedly. You know, I thought about this today. This might not be the best thing to bring up. I don't know. But I thought, in thinking about this message today and thinking about this today, what if pastor was to get up and announce on Sunday, we're going to have revival. What's Sunday? Somebody help me. Sunday's the 22nd. We're going to have revival starting next week, December 29th. Brother, whoever can be here, and they're going to be here throughout the whole week. What's your first thought that comes into your mind? Yeah, come on, Pastor, it's the holidays. Man, we're wore out from all this. I get that. What if the very person that needs to, after we got sent out the postcards and send all those things out, that very person might be willing to come that night and say, you know what, that's exactly what I need. I, I don't, I'm not saying that we're going to have revival by no stretch. But see, too many times we, when we hear those things, we automatically begin to make excuse. Is our whole heart then in it? Or is it just as long as it's convenient? Pastor, can you wait till January 29th? That way we'll be a month from the holidays. We'll be past the, the youth meeting. and We'll be past all those things. It'll just be easier then. God did an end to whatever is easier. He might want to save somebody that week. Might want to save somebody this very week. How much is our whole heart into this upcoming service, this upcoming Sunday? How many visitors will we have this Sunday? How many people will we have from families that aren't normally here, even on Sunday night? Are we wholeheartedly praying for that service, or do we look at it as, oh, that's just our Christmas program? No, to, to, to me, that's when we need to be even more in prayer because we're going to have more than likely more visitors than normal here family that we do pray for on a on a daily basis will more apt to not be here on Sunday night are we going that little extra giving just that little more sitting on that great pot to do everything we can God save them God just show up and get hold of them it, whether it be the puppet show whether it be the kids program whether it be the choir singing whatever whether it be brother Doug preaching it whatever it is just get a hold of their heart are we doing it wholeheartedly or we just look at it as just a throwaway service Because I've caught myself, maybe I'm just telling on myself, that we just kind of, yes, that service is important, but it's just, it's our Christmas program. That's no different than anything else. And if we don't go into it wholeheartedly, we'll have many lost that will walk in here Sunday night and walk out the same way. Because we didn't seek him wholeheartedly. Our pastor prayed before service. If he was here for prayer, what did he say? God, you just want our whole heart. That's all he wants. Instead of haphazardly or halfway trying to meet him, just give him our whole heart tonight. Seek him wholeheartedly for what he'd have you to do. I'm done. Pray, Pastor. 
Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.